It happens every night. Or not. And I ain't never met a riverboat dealer that could ever be a friend of mine. I literally hate riverboat Summer dealers. He never treats me kind. It leaves trouble on my mind. So I'm bidding farewell, putting in my notice, and I'll see you at another time. Sing. This highway does not know my name, and I nope. don't care. Huh. Who nope. I don't care. Any in my way for another place, and I got three right to the hook right here. And a spare. Just a white line gypsy getting out of Mississippi with just enough gas to get there. Low budget. Live, not so live from the low budget live bar and grill, right here in beautiful, sunny Middle Tennessee, Southern Middle Tennessee. That's the most important part, man. We down here in the South, the South Middle, right here, close to close to Alabama, but close enough to be a, in Tennessee to be a Tennessee Vol baby. And welcome to Low Budget Live for Monday, September twenty seventh. 2021, and you heard that correct, September 27th, September's about the next time you and I will see each other through the through the YouTubes, the next time my voice will be in your ears, it'll be October 2020, 2021, and that's uh, it's crazy, man, you can wake up in the South, you can wake up in the South, man, you, you go to bed and it'll be like 90, and them cicadas will be hollering and the mosquitoes will be all over you, and you wake up the next morning, Stretch and you're like, damn, my house is cold this morning. What, what's going on? And you walk outside and it'll be 43 degrees. They don't even care in Tennessee. They will straight up, straight up bring on the colder temps. About this time every year, you're gonna get it. And you don't expect it because man, you sweating down the down down your, your crack, you know, doing anything weed eating two weeks ago. You just man, I hate yard work. And then all of a sudden it's just fall. Just ha- now, now it'll go back to ninety degrees next week, but I've been I've been dealing with that uh, dealing with that this week. Them nights have been nice, but I'm gonna tell you something right here. I'm on. This is y'all know I'm honest with you people, all you low lifers, the listeners of this fine program. And I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to. If you don't follow me on Instagram, you ain't already seen this, but I have to show you. I finally, finally gave in. Finally gave in to the. Uh, so the fact that I'm getting a little thin on top, I don't care to talk to you people about it. I'm getting a little thin right here. I got hair everywhere else, head to toe, head to toe, son, haired up. I am like, if you needed a beard, some of y'all out there struggling to struggling with your stubble, you can't grow any facial hair whatsoever. I see you out there. I see grown men that can't grow anything. I can grow this in 30 minutes. Like I can shave this clean, make me a sandwich. And by the time I get back to the living room, I'll be bearded up again. Like, that's how fast my hair grows, except right here. Except right here. And I ain't going to be one of them dudes. Like, one of my favorite musicians of all time is Steve Earle. And Steve is still holding on to the three long pieces of hair he's got. And he, he, he'll comb it over from, like, behind his ear. He'll go from here all the way to here. And, and the top of his head looks like the LBO bar. It's just slick. <laughs> looks like a bowling lane. And I can't, I can't do that. So I went, uh, I went half inch guard myself. Shout out to Big Fred, the 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 hair stylist, the 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 barber master of the traveling circus himself. But I did this, I did this at home, man. And uh, I finally just got to the point. I'm like, you know what, you know what? It's I, I can't fight it anymore. I can't, I can't fight the baldness. So I'm lucky. I made it to 38 before I just decided to. Quit, quit fighting. My dad, Marty D, he he lost his very young, and he's been rocking the buzz cut for a long time. But here's a problem I got with him and the rest of you low lifers out there um, that are walking around bald. My bald brothers, some bald sisters, some of y'all like to rock that buzz cut too, and I like to, I like that. I dig that as well. 
on the ladies. You ain't always got to have long hair. Dig that short haircut on a lady. But nobody warned me that the first little, first little breeze of fall that was going to come in, just pew, you walk outside, you stretch out. Whoa! Nobody told me that it was like somebody taking a pressure washer of ice cold water and spraying you right in the head. I never thought that. I never thought that. I mean, God give you hair for a reason. That's why all these animals is walking around out here, Harry. I know that now. And now I'm looking forward to freezing during damn deer season and fishing this fall. I can't even run. I was Yesterday, it was 60 degrees. I'm running down the lake just freezing. Nobody warned me. So shame on all y'all. Shame on I know. I, know, I see y'all. I see, you, I see your profile pictures on Instagram, Facebook. Nobody warned me. But uh, y'all, y'all uh, drank up to all of us bald brothers. <laughs> Here's the thing. I'm a happily married man of the triple threat. And uh, I figured she, you know, if she was going to go somewhere permanently, she would have already done it, right? So I got her in when I had the flow. And I was like a musician. And I was a lot cooler than I am now, at least from what she says. And now I'm just, uh, you know, I've always been a bass fishing nut. But now I'm just all bass fishing all the time again. And and that was in a previous life before I met her. She didn't know full bass fishing Luke. It was just super all in to just bass fishing all the time. And so she got cool music playing up till three in the morning, Luke. And I'm not that anymore. Unless I'm sinking brush piles and uh, almost cutting off my finger. So I was putting out some brush, getting ready for the Bassmaster Open. And uh, down at Smith Lake, the next one, I was sinking some brush till three in the morning a couple nights ago. And with a saw, probably I'm going to lean, my healthcare professional wife says definitely. Uh, I say probably, but she says definitely needed stitches. So right right there, <laughs> right right there, ladies and gentlemen, we uh, uh, you don't realize how much you need that finger tying knots and things until you cut the end of it almost off. So, yeah, there we go. It's uh, It's been a good couple of days <laughs> right there. But the triple threat, she got me all doctored up. She, I went to a Walgreens in Coleman, Alabama, and bought medical super glue, uh, some paper towels, some peroxide, uh, some, some Band-Aids, and tried to make it work. This was the next day, you know, because obviously Walgreens wasn't open at 3 in the morning when this happened, but... I had a buddy of mine with me in the boat, and it looked like you had skinned a deer. I I don't know that I ever bled that much. It was uh, it was something. It was something, but we're all good. It was a uh, a handsaw in the boat. I was cutting off this little piece of brush before we sunk it. I thought I cut it all the way off, to be honest, because it was just one of them like, oh, that was an interesting pain. And then you flip on your little headlamp, blood everywhere. Blood everywhere, so... There you go. This is for all the haters. <laughs> is that what you say? I saw Marissa and I were having this conversation about the word hater last night. In triple threat. And, uh, and I know I'm all over the place and random, but uh, like always today, but uh, sometimes I could just, I use, I use the podcast just to, just to talk. And the last couple have been really serious. So you know what? Here you go. This is what you get. But we were talking about haters. We got a, we got a friend of ours. I use the word friend loosely, but in our in our community, and uh, she like works at the bank, you know, uh, just a just a normal housewife with a couple of kids, and she'll be posting on her Facebook. Shout out to all my haters, like like she's a rapper, like five times a week. I I don't know who's hating on this lady, but I want to reach out to her and ask her where. Are you? Where's all them haters at? It's like five times a week, y'all. Shout out to all my haters. Got them putting on sunglasses. Got them hater blockers on. Like, who's hating on this mama that works at the bank teller? She ain't stirring up stuff. She don't have a controversial fishing podcast. She ain't a rapper. She's not a musician. She's not a professional angler trying to make it with mom's basement people commenting that they didn't catch enough. She ain't got no haters, but she thinks she's got haters. And maybe it's like her in-laws or something. And she's just talking to this one person subliminally on social media. You know, her sister-in-law, Rebecca. I don't know. 
I don't know. But what I do know is I'm recording this podcast a few days early because the Triple Threat and I are going to a music festival up in Franklin, Tennessee. And uh, we're going to get out and about in a, in a big crowd for the first time in a little bit. So we're looking forward to that. The, uh, the Pilgrimage Festival, Franklin, Tennessee. Going to get to see Marcus King Band this afternoon. Really pumped about that. The Black Keys, Amos Lee. Um, a band called Jamestown Revival I really dig. The Black Pumas. Triple Threat's excited about seeing Marin Morris. Lots of lots of good things going on. I think uh, Dave Matthews Band's playing. I used to be really into them while I was younger. But uh, y'all know me. I love the music. So we're fixing to get into that. So I'm recording early. And then uh, Nuts Week coming up, I, I've got that. And then literally I'm, I'm home for a day, like after the pilgrimage. Then I fly to the last MPFL of the year. Going to be in the studio in Wisconsin for this one, for our final event, watching this AOI deal play out. So... Busy, busy. I fly back in from that and go right to Smith Lake for the Bassmaster Open. Then I got a week, and then I got the next Bassmaster Open at Grand Lake. Going to fish that one. Uh, didn't know if I was going to get to early in the year because of some work stuff, but uh, going to get to go out there. So I'm going to get to fish all three of those. Pretty pretty pumped about it. I love fall fishing. It It's brutally tough most of the time, but looking forward to that. But just, just crazy, but going to kick it off this weekend with some, uh, with some delicious music. And something I wanted to say before we, we jump full head first into some bass fishing, and I stop all this rambling insanity, is uh, Billy Strings. If you don't listen to Billy Strings, first of all, you're missing out. I came across Billy Strings on YouTube several years ago. He's a flat top picker, bluegrass picker, one of the best guitar players, in my opinion, in the country, and just fantastic. But the coolest thing about Billy Strings is... He is a bass fishing maniac. He's obsessed with bass fishing. He wears like Z-Man Tackle Company jerseys on stage. He has got hooked up with Matt Onum Robertson. He's wearing Onum hats at bluegrass festivals and playing live music for the bluegrass hippies of this fine country. And Billy Strings released a new album this past Friday and you, it's called Renewal, and you all need to go check it out. Support that dude. Go follow. He's a trip. Billy's a trip. But uh, Billy and I have had some fun conversations, and he is uh, I'm going to try to get him try to get him an LBL Bar and Grill. We're going to try that this winter when his tour kind of slows down. But uh, go check that out, man. It, it's so cool. We don't get a lot of main, and I, I, I won't say mainstream, but, you know, Billy, if, if you look him up, a lot of y'all listen to this know Billy, but he is a uh, – Anybody that like waves our flag, our community is so small. The the bass fishing industry, especially on the pro fish side, and dude, he keeps up with a classic. He keeps it, it's just cool, and uh, it's awesome to see. And he's very vocal about it, and that that's really awesome. So go check out that new album. There's some there's some great tunes on it, and uh, hell yeah, low lifers, go get it. All right, we're gonna talk about some sponsors, and then we're gonna get rolling. I got time to be sitting here all day. I got the triple there. Well, you seen my wife. Just kidding. Love you, low lifers. All right, Star Tron bringing you low budget live, not so live, and live, live lives for going on four years while all at the same time they've been kicking ethanol in the teeth. You put it in your chainsaw, you put it in your weed eater. If you're going to store your boat, now listen to me on this for real, for real, for real. If you're keeping your boat, this is like a, this is scientific stuff right here. Okay, coming out of my mouth of all people. If you store your boat, if your boat sits idle, okay, you, you put some 87 in there with some ethanol in it, and you let that thing sit for like three weeks, you might as well be considering that storage. But ethanol, if it sits idle, that ethanol can attack it. So every time, if you're going to let that boat sit, and I'm not talking about for the winter, you know, and I know a lot of y'all, you, you live in places where the water gets hard, and you got to store your boat long term, where you damn sure better... Put you, put you some StarTron in there if you're doing that. But anytime that boat sits idle for a long period of time, ethanol can absolutely screw it up. So when you go to store it, StarTron in your tank. And that goes for everything. I, I use it, and, and I say it here, but I do. I use it chainsaws, weed eater, whatever. If it's going to sit, especially over the winter, you better put that in the tank. I promise you. Kick ethanol in the teeth with StarTron. You can find this stuff. Basically anywhere, 
No excuses. Don't be running that ethanol-free gas. <laughs> Giving that extra money. Get you some freaking Star Trunk. Keep it in your truck. Put it in your boat. Put it in your truck. You're good to go. That's what I run in everything I got at the house. But Star Trunk bringing you low budget life. Something really cool. Side note from the sponsor plug. Tanner and I, while he was here filming Boats and Pros with Andy Morgan, which I will tell you guys, uh, I'll keep you posted on when that's coming. Could be this week, could be the next week. Tanner's working on it. But we filmed a StarTron commercial, he and I. We had a loose storyboard from those folks. Shout out Corey at Star StarTron for asking me to do this. And we pieced this thing together, filmed it here, and it's going to be on the Outdoor Channel. I'm super geeked up about it. It was awesome. It was so cool for you and I to put our kind of creative creative hats on and film something. And uh, he's he's finishing it up now. We're, we're pretty excited, but you're going to get to see that on, on TV this fall. And uh, I, it's cool. It's, it, it was kind of a proud moment for me. So thank you for StarTron for believing in Low Budget Live and the Traveling Circus. Sims fishing products. Sims, uh, I don't even know what to say about Sims other than the fact that they just they do make they make the best outdoor gear. Like from layers, which we're gonna need boggins beanies. Look, this dude right here is gonna need a freaking beanie. I'm bald now. I got a Sims camo one that I got last year. I'm probably going to have to dip into the website and see if they got any new ones because I'm going to have to switch it up or everybody's going to think I only got one beanie, okay, because I'm going to be wearing one. See, that's a benefit to not having any hair because when you wear a beanie, when you got that, like if you fixed up, you got that hair gelled up or whatever, and it's cold outside and you wear your beanie and you go in to a place of business, you take it off, your hair is messed up. <laughs> see, advantage, bald guy. Now I can just wear a cool-looking beanie wherever I go, walk inside, and not burn my ears up. There it is. So, right there. I don't know what that's got to do with Sims other than I do have a cool Sims beanie. But you get one life, fish it well. Fish it well. Even if it means putting out brush in the middle of the night and bleeding all over one of your favorite Sims hoodies. Fish it well. You get one life. Fish it well. I appreciate Sims. Pro dry rain suits, solar flex hoodies, the whole nine. Wearing some Sims shorts right now. You just don't even know because you can't see below the camera. I do have pants on though. Shorts. Sim shorts. Sims fish it well. Pro guide batteries get you some of them. Pro guide lithiums. They're like half the weight. And I promise you, they've made such a difference in my express. The weights at that back end of the boat, it floats shallower now which is crazy because it already floated in about 10 inches of water, but got got those lithiums in there. I can get over some bars. It's definitely going to come in handy in the next two tournaments, I believe, just because of that, because of the sheer weight difference. And I can get over some stuff that uh, I, I couldn't before, and I was already getting ahead of a lot of people in fiberglass boats to places. So really looking forward to that. But you can use code LBL10 at ProGuyBatteries.com for a discount and go try those out. Or the 31 AGMs that I've ran all year, before the lithiums, freaking rock solid. I'm still running one as a cranking battery. They're, they're, they're top-notch batteries, top-notch people, pro-guide batteries. And last but not least, hang the banner right here. Express Boats, Hot Springs, Arkansas, the official boat of Low Budget Live and the Traveling Circus, that X-21 with the 250 Yamaha show. It's got that sea deck, and I got that sea deck filthy, sinking some brush, putting in the work. You got to work putting in that work, and you know what I did? Rolled up to a car wash, <whistles> sprayed it out, just sprayed it out. And it, it's amazing how quick it is to clean. And uh, I had Tanner with me when he was in town a couple weeks ago filming. We took it to the car wash too. It was I, I had fish blood, and uh, not my blood like this week, but fish blood all over it and uh, from just a schooling fish massacre the other day. And... Uh, fish poop all over it as well and took it to the car wash sprayed it off and he and i were going like 30 minutes down to the lake and he's like dude the boat's gonna be soaking wet i said i promise you when we get to the ramp it's gonna be dry before then but it's gonna be dry when we get there he's like okay and uh dude we pull up it's bone dry blue is mine he was like dude why is this not in every bass boat i'm like I don't know, but Express puts it in at the factory, Sea Deck, Florin, and the X-21. Loving that thing, man. Can't wait to fish these last two opens out of it. And then I get to go with Express down to Gross Savon Lodge in Louisiana down in uh, November. 
get to go do that in that X-21. So we appreciate the folks at Express Boats being the official boat and supporting LBL. Express Boats, building excitement since 1966. All right. Man, that was a long, uh, long-winded long intro, but what are you going to do? Um, you got a microphone. You got thoughts. You just send them out there into the world. And the last two weeks have been sad openers, and they've been serious openers, and they've been controversial openers for people that can't handle hearing things that differ from them or their opinions. So, you know, um, there we go. There we go. Uh, I want to say congrats, and I'm recording this, full disclosure, on Saturday morning. So a couple days early. The Bassmaster Open at Lake Norman is not finished, but I wanted to say congrats to DW, my buddy DW, David Williams, winning the points in the Southern Opens and almost going perfect. And if you've never fished those Opens, and I know I talk about them a lot on here, but if you've never fished those Opens, I don't think you can really wrap your head around how special of a season David had. He's qualified for the elites like four times. Guy's an animal. He's won on the FLW Tour. He's a great guy. Great dad and just a great angler from North Carolina. But he, uh, I mean, he was like out of a possible 600 point. Like he was damn near close to perfect. I think he had a top 10 at all three events. Like that's that's mind-blowing from Harris Chain to Douglas to Norman, which is his home lake. It's impressive, man. It's impressive. So D-Dub's going back to the elites again. Awesome for him. Jacob Fouts, young, young angler, making it. Uh, over there He's had a great year In those Opens as well He's fishing all of them I believe But he he made it Through those Southerns And man it, it I, This one got me Like I, I teared up When I saw it I smiled big I, I sent him a text But Josh Douglas Dougie He has been after it man For a long time He's had so many Damn close calls And I don't think He would mind me Sharing this with you guys, but he was, he, he had fished FLW like I did and he got over there and he just wasn't, he wasn't feeling it with everything going on. And he still fished the tour this year, but he said, you know, he had some, he had some finishes he wasn't proud of. And so I don't think next year, had he not made the elites, he was going to go back and fish the the big five anymore. He was just going to dedicate himself to the opens again. And man, he made it. He made it in by a few points, and I, I could not be more proud for Josh Douglas and Bree Douglas. Great freaking people, just hard workers. Work, I mean, so hard for their sponsors, so hard pre fishing. He puts in the damn work, man. His life is a, revolves around bass fishing, and I could not be more excited for him because the Elite Series is his dream. It's what he wants, other than to to go to the Classic, and now he's going to have. Even more chances to go to the Classic with getting to the Elite Series. So, congrats to Josh Douglas. Fun watching him on FS1 this morning. Super proud of him, man. And you see a lot of people making posts about guys like Douglas and guys like DW uh, because they're great people, ultimately. And uh, little buddy Sammy George still hanging in there. He finished like sixth in the in the Southern Points, which is astonishing because he had two top 20s and like a 45th. And that don't cut it. I was talking to him last night and – it's crazy how hard those opens are, man. It's it's it that qualifying process is tough, 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 tough. But congrats to Sammy keeping it rolling. He's still way up there in that AOI. He's got his eyes on that angler of the year and the opens prize with two events to go. And hopefully, I'll be at grand with him when he not only qualifies for the Elite Series, but uh, maybe takes home that opens AOI. J Prize, I believe, still leading it, but he's kind of um, he's kind of. Dropped off the last two events. He's had had a couple rough ones in a row. Prosnick, so he can't slip, man. prosnick has got to make it in that overall. He had a chance to to do it in the Northerns, and he didn't. And he had a chance to do it in the Southerns, and he didn't. And so he could have kind of wrapped it up. But I, he's – Prosnick going to have to catch him at the next two. Um, I don't think his lead's that big, in that, and they're only taking three from the overall. Of course, you know, the Centrals have only had one event. He had a good event there at Pickwick. Decent event at Pickwick, so he's decent in the centrals with two to go. It's gonna be it's gonna be crazy to see how it shakes out. And when you're a guy like Jacob, the scary thing is, you know, he's been at that top level. He's been at the elites, and then he chose to go to BPT, right? When the when the split happened, then he decided, okay, BPT's not for me. Even after winning a couple of events and and seeming to have that format figured out, 
Then he quits and goes all in with the opens again. And man, you're just kind of floating around out there. I call it bass fishing purgatory for a reason. I love the opens. I love bass. But the opens are hard. It's a gauntlet. It's 225 people. Lots of things. You cannot have one bad day. I don't even think you can have a bad half a day of fishing, man. You got to be on your game every minute in those things. You can't have a single mechanical failure and nine. To, like it's scary to put your. But you know that's how how it how it is, and that's how it should be. And uh, but Prosnick's got to got to catch him up to get back in, and he and he will. Jacob's fantastic angler, but um, definitely had a couple. Interesting tournaments in a row, and those opens AOI. Uh, that I look down that list, there's a lot of guys that, uh, with two centrals to go, could definitely make it. Matt Panger, I Panger called him up, man. I think he's in that, uh, like the top eight in that deal going into going into Smith and going into Grand. So, look out, BTL on the elites. It could happen, it could happen. That old podcaster could be on there. He's uh he's a hell of a dude, man. I, I like seeing that. I like seeing that. So I wanted to I want to tell just a quick story uh about this about Lake Norman because it's fun reminiscing, man. I was talking to Justin Atkins. I fished an FLW. They had my rookie year, 2016. I fished. Um, they had these invitationals, and they were trying to have fall events. And the entry fee was the same as the tour, and they were they were controversial. A lot of people, a lot of guys didn't want to do them, and they wanted more events, but they didn't want to fish them. And it, it was just an interesting setup and situation. And they were hundred thousand first place, and a win and you're in situation to go to the Forcewood Cup. And hell, I signed up for them. I love fall fishing. And first one was at Norman, and the second one was at Lake Cherokee, and uh, excuse me, not Cherokee, Norris Lake. Up in East Tennessee, James Watson won that one. Brian Thrift won the first one, but I made the cut there at Norman, and I, I found this amazing thing. So all week I've been thinking about this with Norman going on, but I I made the cut, and really I had like three FLWs out of all of them that I fished that I really felt like I had an opportunity to win. Like I found something special that could separate you from from guys. And that was one of them for sure. And we were going, we had locals in that tournament, guys that fished BFA. I mean, it was, it was a lot. And um, because they couldn't fill the field and they end up opening it up, like they were, they were crazy, those invitationals. And, and, um, anyways, got, uh, got, got out there to Norman and found a magical, and, and I don't talk about this a lot, but school and fish, like my deal, like I, I'm, if I'm good at anything, it's it's schooling fish and kind of figuring. I've always been obsessed with that and sight fishing, but and there's not a lot of fall tournaments and you don't have a lot of opportunities where the situations line up. But I spend all fall messing with them like it's my favorite. When people get frustrated with them, that's when I like to mess with them when they've been thrown out a thousand times. And I've got some weird little things that I do, but I found that found the perfect setup for me at Norman, and I blistered their butt one day in practice. And so I was rooming with Michael Neal and Wesley Strader, and we all three made the cut. Th those guys both end up making the top ten. But uh, but my favorite story from the week was day one. We had marshals for the first time, so that was another benefit of that. Of those events, they were testing out the marshal program, FLW was, because we were pissing and moaning about it on tour. We want marshals. We want marshals. And so they were they were doing beta testing on it, basically. At these events And the First day I roll up on my spot And I got like one keeper When I get there And I didn't I knew this place was special But I didn't know how special And anyways I catch a I catch a good bag When I get in there And it's tough You're looking at those Norman Opens weights I mean it's It's always like that at Norman That time of year And we were there in September And it was uh, It was brutal And I And I catch me five good ones I forget what I had the first day But uh uh, the fish were real skinny And anyways I, I jumped off two that day At the net That were In that three to four pound range And Should have been leading it And and knew that I had really screwed up By not getting those fish in One of them was my fault One of them wasn't And uh, Anyways I got a marshal He's pumped man He's fist pumping And uh, fist bumping me Every time I catch one Drop it in a box Well they're entering The estimated weights Well Dude, they bring the camera boat in there, and then there's, like, some spectators following the camera boat. I'm like, damn, what's going on? Like, I know it's tough, but 
Because I, mean, I think I had like 10 pounds the first day, 11 max. I can't even remember. Hell, it could have been nine. I, I was in, I was way up there the first day. But anyway, it's like my phone's in the box and I got it on vibrate and it's just bzz, 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 all day long. <laughs> I'm like, what the, what's going on, man? So fish, and and so I had two of my fish trying to die, so I ended up coming in and weighing in the second they opened the scales. I weighed in because I knew ounces were going to be critical. And I think I was like ninth the first day or something. And uh, may, I don't remember, to be honest. But anyways, I get back in, and I finally where I can look at my phone, and everybody's like, oh, my God, congratulations, man. You're killing it. Yada, yada. Like, whether it was Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, whatever. And I didn't have near as many followers as I did back then, but but uh, now I didn't have as many then as I do now, And but it was just crazy. My phone was melting. Text from my wife, text from my dad, text from my brother, text from friends, text from people that I hadn't heard from for years. It's like, hell yeah, man, go get them. And it's because my marshal had entered in my weights and my fish wrong, and they had me at like 17 pounds, and since 10 o'clock, everybody thought I was leading the FLW. <laughs> And I and I should have been, I should have had close to that honestly, but he was big eyeing my fish, and I didn't know I, he wasn't asking me. He was a tournament angler, so he was just entering them in. And I mean, hell, everybody at FLW was pumped when I got in, you know. And uh, it was so funny, man, so funny. And it ended up finishing that event in like fifteenth or eighteenth or something, but uh, I don't remember now. But just that those memories came back. Uh, from that, from that, those events, man. Uh, and I remember Brian Thrift won, of course. And uh, but Thrift knew where I was fishing, and I'd had a run in with a local on day two, and word had got around. I, I had a guy who was a local in the tournament, saw the photo gallery, which was legal, and he came in on me on day two, and he started with me and, and rub rail to rub rail, and he caught a good bag the second day. Literally fishing like this with me all day long, and Thrift had heard about it because I I I got the guy pretty good a few times because it it wasn't right. He poached me pretty bad, and uh, and from the pictures he knew, and he had like five pounds first day. Well, he caught like fourteen the second day, so he ended up making the cut. So he was in there with me on day three, and it sucked, but uh, well, that's what it was. But Thrifty, I remember the last day, he's like, Duncan, I know where you're at. You can win. I'm like, hell, I should be leading. Like, you shouldn't even have a chance. And I remember having that conversation with him, and he said, he, he was apologizing, man. I'm sorry that old boy got in there on you, but I'll never forget that conversation. And Brian went out 100 grand on Norman again. He's won a lot of money on that lake and uh, went to the Forestwood Cup there. But so a lot of, a lot of flashbacks to Lake Norman. Man, I, I love bass tournaments. I do. I, I love them. And that was one of my favorite ones ever. When I fished FLW, just kind of lined up and had a chance and didn't capitalize. But uh, congratulations to all the people that figured out the Norman Prize, uh, the Norman, the Norman Prize, the Norman Puzzle this week. That's a that's a tough old lake. Uh, MPFL, I ask all of you to watch it this week. There's not a lot of pro bassing left in this this old world. We got one event and our championship. I invite you all Thursday to watch live coverage. Me and Dudley, we're going to be at the studio in Wisconsin commentating the Grand Lake Shakedown. We got uh, the AOI races within like three or four points. You got Brandon Perkins up there, Keith Carson, John Sokup. A lot of great anglers. If you have not watched us all year, I'm telling you, you need to watch this event. It's going to be very interesting to see how it plays out. Not only will somebody win, we're going to take 25 guys to our championship. So we got two events left. But go check it out. It's a lot of drama uh, coming into this one as far as that points race. And I'm just going to look at this camera and tell you right now, a lot of y'all sleeping on MPFL out there. I see a lot of you even clowning on it on the internet. Ha, ha. I could catch them in MPFL from my mom's basement. Uh, I see a lot of that kind of stuff um, from tournament anglers, which is kind of a shame, right? Like MPFL. I think Randy Blockett did a video about it or something. He was whining like, Always, um, he's like, MPFL makes it hard for me to make a living. Something along those lines. I don't watch his videos because it's all clickbait, just whatever. Um, but somebody, somebody said that he said something like that. Uh, said that basically it's making it hard for him to be a pro angler because there's another pro fishing trail. I'm not sure. I don't even know where Randy Blockett fishes anymore. He makes 
like weird clickbait videos going down the road, like just drop my kids off at school uh, videos. But I'm not sure why MPFL is affecting him. I think Randy should probably fish MPFL. That's just my my thing. But what I'm what I'm getting at is, don't sleep on MPFL. Don't sleep. You can remember remember on the the September twenty seventh two thousand twenty one LBL that I told you, I told you that it's here to stay. And I told you that in twenty twenty two you gonna want to watch. <laughs> Because some, some of you, I, I'll put it this way. There's some of y'all haters out there. There goes a hater, like my neighbor lady. she got them haters. Some of you haters that's going to be forced to watch next year. You're going to be like, damn, I got I to gotta see what's going on over there. You're going to. You're going to. You might not like it. It might be like LBL. You might not like it, but you're watching. Same thing with MPFL next year. You're going to want to tune in. So definitely you, go ahead and learn some of these names you might not know. That you call nobodies You know You might want to tune in to these last two If you ain't watched all year That way you're studied up That way when next year Things are going to get even more interesting You're going to be tuned up You're going to be tuned up All right. So that starts this coming Thursday You're going to want to uh, be on there um, Tuning in and, and and look, I apologize if Randy Blockett didn't say something about MPFL. I, and I don't really don't even care if he did. Uh, somebody, I had several people send that to me. And I did see somebody shared, he made a post. And there that was like, which tournament trail is the hardest? And then some douchebag was like, well, MPFL is definitely the easiest. I bet I could catch them there from my mom's basement. Something along those lines But uh, somebody sent me that I don't know I stoked the fire a lot So I can't really uh, And you know As far And I'm an opinionated dude So I'm not knocking anybody That's opinionated If if they don't uh, See eye to eye With uh, what I say I will say That I feel like Randy Blockett Like 99% of his videos Are clickbait Just from the title And I will say That maybe There have been Some low budget lives That have had Similar subject matters and almost identical titles that matched up with not clickbait that matched up with those titles that have maybe popped up on his channel from what I've been sent as well. <laughs> I'm just saying, maybe just be creative. Maybe, maybe. Which there's four things to talk about in pro fishing, right? So I get it. You're going to say something like, you should never use a hot foot, it'll kill you. Click, 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 click. Electronics are bad. Click, 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 click. Whatever. Stay relevant any way you can, I say. Good on him. He's got like a, he's got a lot of subs. A lot of people enjoy his videos. That's fine. A lot of people love to hate his videos as well. But uh, but somebody did say that his like his quote was MPFL makes it harder for him to make a living. And I need to go watch the video before I speak about it, I guess, but I don't want to watch it. Um, I don't understand that. I don't understand that. But you know what would make it easier to make a living is catch more fish. <gasps> Duh. As a pro angler, right? I think that's that's pretty simple. Pretty like that's that's simple math. That's simple math. Uh, one thing I want to talk about: we have nobody coming on the uh, the eagle claw hook today. Nobody. I ain't got nobody on a hook. No guests lined up. Uh, decide just to ramble on this one. And there's something that, that's been bugging me. I'm going to close the show with this. And, uh, and, and, and y'all have heard me talk about this a lot, um, you know. But this cancel culture stuff, it's happened to me. It'll happen to Randy Blockett. I don't want y'all not watching Randy's videos because I said something. You know, just because people say stuff that you don't agree with, like I can, I can make a joke about that. Well, Randy's this or that or whatever, but like, I don't dislike Randy because his opinions differ from mine or his viewpoints are different. Like, I don't. I don't. Um, he He's doing well in life on YouTube and things like that, and I, I think that that's cool, you know? Um, I really do. I'm not, a, I'm not a hater like that. Uh, you know, I dislike people that do things to me, per, like, on personal level. You know, obviously some of the beasts I've had – in the fishing industry have come from personal things. But, like, if your opinion differs from somebody, and, and I've faced this the last couple of weeks and talking about vaccines and things like this 
and 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 this is the point of this is be careful what you freaking wish for because right now on this platform on YouTube the seek one productions guys the seek one hunting guys good dudes from Georgia doing backyard bow hunts they've been demonetized and for hunting videos and they're really conscious about how they produce these hunting videos but YouTube's just crushing it like they're 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 freaking choking it out and i think that i think the same thing i think it's happening in fishing i, I think fishing views have gone way down uh on a lot of channels that i keep up with i think they've gone down on mine and i think that when the subject matter is this that they're going to choke that out. And why I'm saying be careful is a lot of the guys, and, and I'm speaking specifically to, to, you know, a lot of, and I'm not a, I'm not a political show, man. I'm not. I'm, I'm not a political person at all. But I, I feel like left-wing folks, liberals, as people like to say, it's always funny to me. You call me a liberal, liberal. Like I see right wing people getting mad. Anyways, are accused of like cancel culture stuff. But now what you're seeing, it's the same way for people that believe the opposite. Like the extremes politically on both sides act basically the same. And what's the saying? Like you got to be careful or you'll become what you hate. Well, that's, that's the situation because now we're seeing that with like the coronavirus stuff, the vaccination stuff. You're seeing people that are like super on Fox News not wanting to listen to a guy that says he's vaccinated. Like, it's crazy. It's crazy to me. And so I'm just saying, like, be careful. Be careful because then we get to in this, this situation where the things we love, hunting and fishing, like we fight so much with each other on, on podcasts like this, on fishing and hunting posts, that deer's not big enough. This is this. Oh, you stupid. I'm never watching you again. You said this. You said that. Like now the content that we all crave, that we love is being censored. Like you got to be careful. Like we got to be careful in, in all of this, man. Like I just don't know where it stops. I don't. I, I don't. But... Uh, you know, YouTube, I say that about the ads they put on my videos. They'll put 4,000 ads on one of my videos every minute. I have to go back in and delete them. If I'm not at a computer, I can't. Like, it's crazy to me sometimes. And I swear to God, I think they do that not from a revenue standpoint, but to keep people from watching the videos. That makes me sound like Alex Jones or somebody wearing a tinfoil hat. But I'm just saying, like, they'll put 50 ads. Hey, y'all have seen them. I get the comments. They'll put 50 ads in the first freaking 10 minutes of a damn video of a low budget live podcast that's going to get 4000 views. Like it's it's wild to me. Like every minute and a half sometimes. Like it's it's crazy. So I, I don't know. I, I think that but I, I think if hunting is pushing the envelope for them and they want and and listen, the Seek One guys have crazy numbers, crazy support. Their demonetized videos are getting hundreds and hundreds of thousands of views. They're selling merch. They're, they're, those guys are going to be fine, but it's just, I'm, I'm just saying, just because this culture, man, because you disagree with something, you got to hate it. Or you disagree with something, you got, it's got to end right there. What? Like, we should be better about educating ourselves about the other side. Like, I got family members I don't agree with with, with shit, whether it's politically or, or whatever, their their views, their values. But damn, I don't hate them. I, I got friends that that we have educated, you know, intelligent conversations about about stuff. Even in bass fishing, dude. I mean, and I I know I'm one to talk. Like I I'm I'm the guy that has waved the flag about MLF and different things over the years. But man, you gotta be you do you gotta be careful what you wish for, and you gotta be careful what you're on your mouth about. And, and we're just seeing that, man. We're seeing that right now. Um, it's sad. It's sad that that something... And I know there are a lot of anti-hunters out there, and I, and I get it. I get why you might not want to watch somebody shoot a deer with an arrow. I get it. But at the same time, you're going to roll up to McDonald's and eat some chicken nuggets. So 
you know, it's kind of like not putting the vaccine in your body while you suck down a Diet Coke, but saying, I don't know what's in that while you eat a quarter pounder. (laughs) Like, what? Uh, I I just, I don't know, man. I think as, as outdoors men and women, like we can't eat our own, I guess is what I'm getting at. It, it, the the more you the it's and I and I use and I, sorry Randy block it I hate to keep going back to Randy but I'm saying like the more like me even saying anything about him is not not good because I don't want a bunch of hate going his way like it's it's silly man it's silly like he enjoys the same thing I enjoy and that you enjoy it's it's just like me saying something about the vaccine like dude I had a conversation with a guy on Instagram I'll leave it at this. He was very upset at the fact that Chris Zaldane posts on my uh, one of my posts about one of our MPFL anglers passing away, and I think I've already mentioned this, but about the vaccine. Chris says, get vaccinated, and he was pissed. This guy was pissed, and he was in the comments for days. And, and I sent him a message. I was like, hey, man, with all due respect, like I think you need to shut the hell up. Like This was a, this was a post about a man that lost his life, blah, blah, blah. So we have this back and forth. And I normally do not do this, especially in DMs. Just don't, I ain't got time for it, honestly. But this 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 one just kept going. And there was something that I left him with that I want to leave y'all with. That's kind of that kind of ties all this together that I'm that I'm talking about with the censorship and with this cancel culture um, that we're living in. And where I say listen to people. Or just turn them off. Same with me. If you don't like what I got to say, you ain't got to tell me you hate me. You don't have to put in the comment, whatever. Just like, You just don't have to listen. Like, it's simple. It's very simple. When I consume things that, that I don't like, just turn the channel. I watch a YouTube video that I don't enjoy. I don't give it a thumbs down. I just go on about my business. Like, just you, that's, that's, that's what it is. But what I told this guy... What I told this guy, who was accusing Chris Saldane of being a liberal, um, like it was crazy. And Chris is like, I feel like I'm not speaking out of school here for saying, like, I feel like Chris is super right wing, you know, not really just a, you know, uh, I feel like he's very conservative, like a lot of people in the fishing industry are. And this guy was like, he said, go back to California, liberal. Like, just really stupid stuff to Zaldane for saying this. And he was like, I used to be your hero, and now you used to be my hero, and I'll never support you again. Like, for saying he's back, like, whatever. Um, but this guy, my point to him, and this is what I'm going to leave you with, is this. This guy was quoting politicians to me. He was quoting news anchors to me. Uh, and it's pretty simple, folks. It's pretty simple. These people that you're listening to, for the most part, they're not like you and I. They're not. Our community, our network, our niche group in the outdoors, if you're not in it, you don't get it. You just don't. And if you were broken down, this is what I told this guy, If you were on the side of the road with a flat tire on your boat trailer at four in the morning headed to takeoff, would you rather take your chances with me and my boat and truck come pulling up on you? You think I'm going to stop? Most likely. Chris Saldane, you think he's going to stop? Most likely. Joe Biden come pulling up. What do you think he's going to do? Skirt. Unless it's a photo op. Donald Trump, what do you think he's going to do? Skirt. Keep on going. Unless it's a photo op. Every news anchor on CNN. Skirt. Every one of them on Fox News. Skirt. They're going to go right by you. But an outdoorsman recognizes another outdoors. like seeing a guy with an eagle claw hat on at Walmart. What's up, man? You nod at him. You know. You can spot a fisherman. You walk in a freaking restaurant. You can spot another angler. Outdoorsman. Hunter. They got a logo on their truck. They got a hat. We are in this together. Regardless of what side of the fence you're on, stop eating your own. Stop. 
We got enough outside forces in this outdoor world coming at us. Stop eating your own because you don't agree and their viewpoints make you, because you're so insecure with whatever you got going on in life, that you can't hear a differing opinion. Stop. Stop. It's that simple. Control what you consume. If you don't like it, you don't like the subject matter on whatever podcast you're listening to, whatever television show, whatever Instagram post, it's pretty simple. Mute it and go on. If, if somebody you believe in, that you listen to a hundred episodes in a row of whatever show it is, says something you don't agree with on that hundredth show, come back for the hundred and first. People that are pumping out weekly content, and I'm not even talking about myself, I'm talking about podcasts that I listen to. They, they're recording four and five episodes. Well, you never know what might come out of their mouth. This is a job. It's one I love dearly, but the people that really do, it's a freaking job, man. The people that are doing it full time. So there are times that I listen to my most, the stuff that I love to listen to, and I'll be like, eh, it's not a good episode. Eh. You know who I tell about it? Nobody. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's real life, man. Just go on. There's so many other important freaking things to worry about. So be careful out there. Be careful what you wish for. You get to beating that drum too loud, you go deaf. It's a lot easier just to go, yeah, I'll just watch next week. Yeah, I'll just keep on swiping. Go look at mindless TikTok dances. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty simple, man. It's pretty simple. Care about your fellow man? Do right by other folks. Keep your nose clean. Go to work. I don't know. Something like that. It's it's it just seems like it's a lot easier than we're making it these days, man. Instead of being like, you wearing a blue hat, I hate blue hats. Oh, I'm triggered. Like YouTube. They have hunting guidelines. The Seek One boys follow them to the letter. We don't like hunting. Shut it down. Bass getting hooked in the mouth. We don't like that. We gonna choke her down. You wait and see. You wait and see. Now, look, it's a free platform. Through the monetization, but when you have followers, when you get views, I get a check from them. I could go other places, and I might if it keeps getting worse. You know, it's, it's easy for me to put my things on YouTube, iTunes, Spotify. I like the interaction of YouTube. I like the, the capability of going, you know, live which I don't do enough. But all this being said, I could get off of here too if I wanted to. You know, find another platform, tell you low lifers where to find it, and and move along. So you got to look at it from that aspect too. But the Seek One guys, from the way I understand it from watching videos and talking to folks in the know is they are following the guidelines and they are very confused at why this happened. And YouTube's like, if we choke the money off that you get from all your views, that we get, that we give to you for advertisers running videos on your, running ads on your videos, while YouTube gets, you know, to be more uh, loaded than they already are, we're just going to choke it out. But, but you can find a video right now, and I've seen them, and I won't even name the channels because they're, they're just annoying to me. But like you can find a video right now of a guy who will go eat as many edibles as he can, roll them up in a ball and eat them like a baseball and see what they do to him. And my kid can find that right now. Now, it's my job as a parent to make sure he doesn't find it. But like my 10-year-old who stays on YouTube, he can go find that right now. He can find a challenge where some dude is snorting freaking, you know, hot Cheetos ground up on a thing, you know, whatever. You can find that. Hey, and here's the thing. Some of that shit I kind of like because, I mean, I used to watch Jackass, right, Steve-O. But, but that kind of stuff's huge, viral videos, 
YouTube ain't clamping down on that. <laughs> like, but a guy that these beautiful, I mean, cinematic film, those seek one thing, they're they're some of my favorite things I've ever watched. And they're choking that down. What? Just because somebody might not want to see them posing with a deer at the end. Get out of here. Get out of here. Like, so be kind to each other in the outdoors, even if you don't agree with like we we are we are the minority in this whole world. Like we may feel like proficient's a big deal. It ain't to nine out of ten people walking down the street. We might feel like bow hunting's a big deal. It ain't to nine out of ten people. Don't eat your own, man. Don't eat your own. All right. Thank y'all so much for listening. I appreciate you, each and every one of you out there, you low lifers. The one the, those of y'all that are on the outside fringe thinking, do I want to be a low lifer? Is that something I want to get into? Come on in. The water is fine. I'm going to take you out with some Biloxi Blues. And then I'm going to go get my groove on up there at that pilgrimage festival with my hot wife. I'll see y'all next week. Be sure to hug your mama. I'm going to have to record early again for next week's show. So just keep that in mind. It's going to be pre-recorded because whenever I get back from Grand Lake, I got to go fetch me some bass and try to make the bass match classic. All right. Take you out with Bluxy Blues. See y'all next time. Well, I'm going to leave them in the past. Any direction, Lord, I'll be fine. It don't matter east or west. North, south, wherever the wind blows, I'm leaving those burdens at rest. This highway, it does not know my name, and I don't care, no, I don't care. Heading my way for another place, and I got three good tires and a spare. Just a white line gypsy getting out of Mississippi with just enough gas.